Hey, what's up y'all? This is Lewis, Lewis Speaks 2022. And today I wanna to talk to you all about the topic of love. You know, love in 2022 is very tricky because we all have different definitions as to what love is. And oftentimes those definitions have been a direct result of how we were raised, how we grew up, and what we experienced in past relationships. Um, for me, my definition of love is an unselfish looking out for the well-being of another person to really consider them and ask yourself what might they need independent of me and my needs. You know, because we all come to the table with needs and sometimes we try to impose our needs and project our needs on someone else's experience. You know, we all have the tendency to look by our own autobiography and what someone is telling us. And we want to know how it applies to us. And I think oftentimes when you are so focused on the me and how this affects me, you really lose sight of the person that you're trying to love. And I think part of love also is a willingness to have the difficult conversations, to really sit with the discomfort of these conversations and actually work towards a resolution, you know? Um, I think a lot of people don't want to have these difficult conversations. I think that when you love somebody, you want to make them better. When you love somebody, you want to confront them gently about certain behaviors that you feel might impact the relationship. A lot of people are not well enough to receive that. I'm just going to say that they're not well enough in the sense that they lack a sense of self, you know, and their ego identity and their ego strength is low because they're unwilling to have those conversations and receive constructive feedback as to how you can make things better. And I think that's the frustrating part with me. You know, even in my work with clients, I realize that sometimes you have to confront them and what I call it care confrontation. You have a care confrontation with someone. Um, you care about the relationship, you want it to work. And so you definitely want to engage in a gentle confrontation, but a lot of people are not well enough to receive that. They are stuck in their own mindsets. They're in their own way. And sometimes when you love somebody, you have to just give them that space. And that's a very difficult thing to do also because a lot of people are not ready. They're not ready for the love that you have to give. And that's frustrating. That's really, that's the part that really is aggravating. It's like you have so much love to give. You see areas where you both can grow together, but they're just not ready, you know? And it's this lack of awareness. It's the lack of readiness that really frustrates the love process, you know? So I think that it's important to love yourself first. That is so important. And oftentimes we... We see self-love as just like <laughs> getting your nails done, you know, or getting your hair done. Or, But I think self-love is just being willing to have the difficult conversations with yourself and to put your ego aside and be willing to receive the constructive feedback. That's an element of self-love. That to me is a factor of self-love and we need to talk about i think that we talk about love languages in terms of loving other people but we also need to talk about self-love languages how can we really love on ourselves what is our self-love language you know and really just analyzing that because i think that a lot of people can't receive love because they don't really have love for themselves and they don't really have an operational definition as to what love is you know a lot of people grew up with many toxic forms of love, you know? For some people, love means abuse and taking abuse and suffering or even inflicting abuse on someone else. That's their definition of love because they grew up in chaotic homes where love was absent, genuine love. This toxic love was present and that's what they grew up on a diet of toxic love and that's what they know, that's all they know. And so it's about relearning and reconfiguring your current definition of love, a healthy love. I'm talking healthy love because there's just so many loves out here that are just so dysfunctional, maladaptive, unhealthy, just unhealthy. And so the love that I'm talking about and referring to is a healthy love, 
to be honest, a spiritual love, a love that leads you back to your creator. You know, I say to myself, even in my friendships, if you're not leading me back to God, if you're not leading me back to the source, then you're not really loving on me. You're not loving me in a way that I need to be loved because quite frankly, we're all humans. We're limited in what we can do for one another. We need someone higher than us because I'm learning that we're just dominating each other to our own injury. You know, we're all bumping our heads trying to figure it out and we're getting it wrong. We have to be willing to receive that. That's the truth we have to be willing to receive. We're getting it wrong half the times. When it comes to love, we are getting it wrong. And we have to learn, okay, what can we do to get it right? What can we do to actually start loving each other in a way that means something? You know, we can start with our self-love language, definitely, but we have to take it further because we're not an island unto ourselves. We live in a world with other people. So now we have to talk about elements like care, consideration, thoughtfulness, gentleness, softness, softness, holding space for other people and really genuinely listening, not to respond, but to understand. There's so many people who you talk to, they just want to listen to respond and they don't really listen. They just hear what they want to hear. They're not attuned to what you're saying. And it's that lack of attunement, that lack of attunement to really zero in on what you're feeling and thinking. That right there is the result of so many miscommunications. So many, so many breakdowns in communication are the result of a lack of attunement and really zeroing in and listening to understand. I've noticed that even with the team that I'm working on, they don't really listen to one another. They are just always in defensive mode, in response mode, and that's based on fear. That's based on insecurity, you know? A lot of people feel as though they, <laughs> they're not meant to be where they are. They suffer from imposter syndrome. They feel as though they're just not qualified enough, so they have to prove themselves. And so it's this fear of being ignored, dismissed, not seen, that causes them to dig their heels in and try to be right all the time, but they're not listening. In the process of trying to always be right, you're not listening, you're not receiving. And it's that lack of reception, that lack of warm reception for another person's perspective that creates so many difficulties. And I just wish other people will understand that because I'm coming into an awareness every single day of that fact, even with myself. Sometimes I'm so busy trying to be heard and I feel so misunderstood that I just dig in my heels trying to be right and trying to be heard and you're missing the greater picture, which is mutual understanding. And I learned that when you try your best to understand somebody else, it motivates them to understand you as well. So I encourage everyone out there, definitely think about your self-love language. Think about your love language. Think about someone else's love language and how you can show love to that person, you know, in a real, real, just tangible way, you know? And sometimes, you know, sometimes listening is an act of love. I truly believe that listening is an act of love. When you really incline your ear to someone's heart and press your ear to their heart, not just listening for a heartbeat, but listening beyond the heartbeat listening for what's really in the soul of a person's heart. That right there is the best intervention. So I hope this video was helpful. This was a brief exploration about love that was just you know circulating in my mind and heart. So I thank you so much for listening and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your year. Peace y'all.